My name is Michael Scavarla, and I am an assistant research professor in the Department of Entomology at Penn State University. I also run the Insect Identification Lab here. And what that means is anybody in the state of Pennsylvania and really the whole country, if they have questions about what is this insect and how do I control it, those all of those that get sent to the department then get sent to me and I identify insects for people. And if they have pests, I help them uh, deal with or control those pests. So I first found the giant lacewing in Arkansas in 2012 when I was a PhD student at the University of Arkansas. And I was walking into a Walmart to do just a bit of grocery shopping. And I saw this large insect on the outside of the building on the door on the way in. And I didn't have anything to collect it in. So I picked up the insect. I thought it was an antlion, which was a group that I was interested in. And I walked through the store doing my grocery shopping with this bug in hand. Um, came out, my wife drove us home, and I held the thing the entire way because I didn't have anything to put it in. When I got home, I killed it in a kill jar, which is just a jar filled with alcohol or nail polish or some other smelly chemical that can kill insects quickly. Uh, mounted it up on a spreading board so it looked very nice, and then... Uh, put it in my insect collection and forgot about it for 10 years. Uh, 10 years later, I was teaching insect taxonomy and biodiversity to graduate students here at Penn State. So it's a class that uh, where students learn how to identify lots of different insects. And when I was teaching antlions, I pulled out what I thought were all of my antlions and showed them this one large insect. And it was quickly apparent that uh, all of the characters that I had just told my students how to identify these antlions, uh, it didn't match any of those things that I had just told them. And so it was immediately apparent that this was something new and something exciting. So the reaction from people on the internet has been, why would somebody walk around with a bug in their hand? And my response to that is you've never met an entomologist. Uh, every entomologist that I know has said, yeah, that makes sense. I've done that. Um, nobody ever has vials or anything on them. And everybody is always seeing cool bugs to pick up. And we just walk around with them until we find something to stick them in. There's a couple of ways that the specimen could have ended up in Arkansas. So this species used to be widespread throughout North America and disappeared from everywhere east of the Rocky Mountains by the 1950s. And isn't, they've not been seen in the east since, but they still exist out west in the Rocky Mountains. And so there's a couple of ways that this specimen could have ended up at this Arkansas Walmart. One, which I think is the most probable uh, situation is there's a population that is existing in Arkansas and has always been there and we just didn't see them before. And I found one of a bunch of this population. It just happened to be where I was at the same time. The other option is that this is a specimen that came from the Western populations that are still out West. And it came in on a truck with some freight, maybe with some goods being delivered to Walmart, flew out of that truck or vehicle or whatever happened to land on the Walmart and I just happened to see it and it was the only one in the area and I was just in the right place at the right time. That seems less likely because these giant lacewings aren't long lived as adults. They died within a week or two fairly quickly. It is an insect's world and we just live in it. Um, insects are the most dominant life form on the planet in terms of number of species. We have at least a million species of insects described and anywhere from 10 to 100 million species out there. So if you think about that, 99% of insect diversity possibly is undescribed. At the very most, 10% has been described. So in terms of just numbers of species, it's all about insects. Um, there's only about 5,000 species of mammals, uh, for example, in contrast. Also in terms of biomass, um, if you were to take all of the insects in the world and squish them into a big ball, 
compare that to things like mammals and fishes, you would have way more insects than everything else. Um, they are just the dominant form of life on this planet. It's just that they're generally so small that we often don't think about them. Um, we also couldn't live without insects. They provide important services like pollination. If pollinators didn't exist, we wouldn't have food and we would all die. Um, so there's all kinds of reasons that insects are important. If you're interested in entomology, if you're interested in insects, if you like looking at them, there are a lot of jobs out there for entomologists. If this is a thing that you want to do, don't let people tell you that nobody works with bugs. There's no such things as an entomologist. Um, when I was a kid in middle school and in high school, I told people that I wanted to work on insects and people looked at me like I had three heads. Uh, they told me I'd never get a job doing that. Nobody did that. Um, you can't go to college for entomology. And I pretty much ignored all of them and went to college for entomology and uh, it's all worked out from there. So, uh, you know, if you're driven enough, if you like insects to that point, you can go to college for insects, for entomology and get a job working with them. Um, don't let the haters hate on you. <laughs>